first of all, I would really like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to speak here. Um, it's a pleasure to, to give a talk to you guys. Uh, I want to start by just saying a couple of things. So, as, as you heard, I'm originally from Colombia, and that means that English is my second language. I have an accent, and I realize this. So, if, uh, if at some point I say something, and my accent is getting in the way, and you're not understanding what I'm saying, just please tell me to repeat, and I won't, I won't be embarrassed about it. Uh, I want to make sure that you understand what I'm saying. Um, also, it's the first time that I, that I speak to you guys, and I have no idea uh, what mathematics you know, what mathematics you don't know. All I know is that you're excited about mathematics, and that you're good at mathematics, and you're a good thing. Um, but, uh, of course, the, the idea is, is for you guys to understand. It. And so, if you have any questions at any point during the talk, then, then please feel free to, to ask me. Um, I can guarantee to you that if you have a question, probably at least 10 other people have the same question. So if the students want to ask a question, if the parents want to ask a question, if the professors want to ask a question, the camera people, I don't know. Um, <laughs> really, uh, I, I, I'd rather just make this as, as, uh, as much of a dialogue as possible. Okay. Um, Okay, so the topic of my talk is, is called the theory of matrix. And actually, um, so, so Richard Stanley is known as the, as the maybe the, the Jesus of combinatorics, where the God is his advisor. Uh, Giancarlo Roda. Uh, Giancarlo Roda uh, was one of the first people who really took combinatorics, which other fields considered to be kind of a game, and, uh, and showed that there was some really deep mathematics. And he really organized subjects in a beautiful way. And one of his main contributions uh, was really getting the word out about the theory of matrix. Okay. And uh, he used to give the advice that, that if you give a talk, you should only say one thing. And so during this whole uh, hour, I plan to tell you one thing. And I can, I can tell you already what that thing is. I want to basically tell you what a matroid is. Okay? So we're going to spend the whole, the whole hour uh, motivating what a matroid is and why uh, it is an interesting concept. Okay? So maybe to motivate, let's start by, by talking about two very concrete questions, okay? So, so the first question, I drew a little picture here. Uh, so this is meant to be an island. I don't know if you can tell, but <laughs> it's blue because it's the ocean. Okay. This is orange because it's, it's the beach. And, uh, and we have four cities on this island, okay? So this is a, this is a new island. It just got discovered. Uh, there are four cities on this island. and there were no roads in this island, okay? So people kind of settled into these four cities. Um, the cities don't have names yet because it's so new, so we're going to call them one, <laughs> two, three, and four. Okay. So there's four cities, and, and the people in the island are, they basically said, okay, well, we should build some roads so we can, so we can uh, go visit each other. And so they, they basically drew some plans. So what, it, what you're seeing here is not the roads. What you're seeing is, that, is the plans of how they, they meant to build roads. Okay? So for example, they meant, to build a straight, they meant to build a straight road between one and two, but then they also wanted the scenic road. So if they want to go around and see the, and see the beautiful view. Um, and then they proposed a road from one to three, a road from two to three, a road from three to four. And then this road from four to just kind of loop around and see and see the beach and come back. Okay, so those those were the plans. Um, but the problem is that the economic crisis hit them, and then they had these great plans of, of building all these roads. But then they figured out that actually they didn't have enough money to build all the roads, and they said, okay, well let's try to build as much as possible. So what they decided so. so We have some island cities, and so the goal is going to be to build 
um, maybe the, the smallest possible number of rows. So that everything is connected. So that all cities are connected. Okay. So all I care about is that from, from every city to every other city, there should be some way of going. Maybe it's not the shortest way, but there's not a lot of money around. So uh, let's, just, let's just demand that there should be at least one way to go from every city to every other city. Okay. So, so I have a question for you. So what, what is this, uh, what are the people on this island definitely going to have to I'm gonna, let, let me give some names to these roads also, so that we can talk about them. So maybe I'll call the roads, or I'll call the proposed roads A, B, C, D, E, and F. Okay, so what must they do? Anybody? Yeah? A. They must build A. Why is that? Because it's the only one connected. Because if they don't build A, then 4 is going to be disconnected from all the other cities, right? So they must build A. They must build road. Okay. Yeah? In this case, the optimal solution we should take three because if there's any cycles, there's probably one row basically there. Mm -hmm. so, so then you should just build um, A, B, and C. And then, no, wait, not A, B. What is that? So for example, one, one way of doing it would be A, B, and C. Yeah. So if I build A, B, and C, then everything is going to be connected. Right? Are there any other ways? Depending on, like, who from which city wants to visit whom from the other city, uh -huh. you could either organize it as E, C, A, E, B, A. So give me just a second. E, C, A. E, B, A. Let me just draw, draw that one so that we see at least one. one. So E. Actually, now it looks like a beach. So <laughs> e. C and A. So that's one possible way. Another possible way was A, B, and C. Uh, and there's several other ways, right? Uh, now, can you tell me what they must definitely not do? Yeah? They should not build F. They should not build F, that's right. <laughs> Why? Because F, F is really like a, kind of a luxury road. F is not really helping you visit each other. And this is just a luxury road that will help you see the ocean. So they must not not build road F. Okay. And actually, so for example, here should I, if I already built A, C, and E, should I build road B? No. Well, no, right? Because I already have a way of getting from from one to three, which is going around. Okay, so I definitely don't don't need to build that one if I'm trying to save money. And so I'm going to repeat what you said, which is that it's kind of pointless to build a cycle, right? Because if if I already have all but one road of the cycle, then I, I don't need to build this new road because I already have a way of going around. So that means that I should never. Close the site. They should never close the site. Okay. So maybe we can just introduce some terminology here. So let me make a definition. Let's say that a set of rows is independent. Um, if it contains no cycles. Okay? 
So, um, let's make a list of all the possible independent sets here. Okay, so we see one right here. Um, it's ACE. By the way, so, so you might know that the way that we normally write a set is like this, right? But because we're going to write so many sets today, then instead of writing like this, I'm going to just ignore the, ignore the practice, and I'm just going to call it ACE. But you should always remember that I mean the set A comma C comma C. So that's an example of an ACE. Can you tell me some more independent sets? Well, you need not write out all of them for any subset of an independent set. It's independent. Okay, that's a very good point. Let's go back to that in a, in a few minutes. I, it's a very important point. Um, but for now, let's, let's just list out all the independence. So, you, so I heard ABC, that was the first one that I heard. Any other ones? AC what? ACD. And actually, what I, what I want to do is write them in alphabetical order because I, I like it that way. Um, ACD. ACD. Anything else? A, B, D. What else? A, B, E. Anything else? Yeah. Say it again. It's A, B, C. A, B, C. A, B, C. A, B, C. Anything else? Yeah? B E. Something like B E. So B E is independent. Right? So remember what we're doing here is a list of independent sets. And uh, well, if you just build B and E, you're not closing any cycles. So so B E is one, and let's actually write out all the pairs. Okay? So what are all the possible pairs that are independent? Well, that's kind of a long list. Why don't, why don't we say, what are the ones that are not independent? So, DE is a pair that is dependent. We call it dependent if it's not independent. So, I should not list DE, and I should not list anything that involves F. Because F is a cycle in itself, I, I, don't, get to, I don't get to do that. So, then what I get is all the other pairs, like AB, AC, AD. E, um, B, C, B, D, B, E, C, D, and C, that's it. But there's more, right? So these are the ones of size 3, the ones of size 2, but I also have sets of size 1. So which what sets of size 1 are independent? Well, all of them except for F. Right? <coughs> Is that it? Are there any other independent sets? Yeah? Anybody else? Yeah? The empty set. The empty set. The empty set is a fine enough set. And it contains no cycles because it doesn't contain any. Okay, so here are my independent sets. And now what is the answer to the question that I ask? I asked you, we want to build a uh, one as possible number of rows so that all cities are connected. How, how many ways are there to do this? Well, there's five ways and they're listed right here. So these are the five, the five possible things that they, that they could do. Okay? Um, let me introduce another word. Okay. Definition. I'm going to say that a basis is going to be an independent set that you cannot make any larger and stay independent. Okay. A basis is an independent set that you cannot enlarge. And, and keep being independent. So for example, all of these are bases because, because you have nowhere else to go, right? As soon as you as soon as you build a fourth row, no matter which one you build, you're gonna close the cycle. 
Now, are any of these bases? We have to think about it for a second, but, but we can check that, that that's not the case. For example, AB can be enlarged to ABC, AC can be enlarged to ABC, AD can be enlarged to ABD, AE can be enlarged to ABE, BC can be enlarged to ABC, BD to ABD, BD to ABE, CD to AC, <coughs> CE to AC. So everything in the second and the third row can be enlarged. And of course, everything in the in the second row can be enlarged, and the empty set, of course, can be enlarged. So, so these are our bases. Okay, so that's that's the answer to that question. Okay. Um, so let's switch topics. Keep that in mind. We're going to come back to this. Let's switch topics and talk about a second situation, which is the following. Um, so there's a there's a little village, and in the little village. There are exactly three single women and six single men. Women and and uh, and there's this guy in the little village that is the matchmaker. So uh, in this village, it's a very traditional village where the, the matchmaker is the one that decides who gets married to who. And actually, he gets hired by by the men. And why the men? Because there's so many of them. Uh, that actually, the, the men are going to pay prices to the matchmaker, and the matchmaker is going to try to marry them in the best way possible. So that's going to be the goal of the matchmaker. So this ends up here. This ends up here. Okay. So what is the goal of the matchmaker? It's to marry as many people as possible so that we can make more money. Go uh, marry as many people as possible. Okay. Now, you have to remember it's the US, and in the US, same-sex marriage is not allowed, polygamy is not allowed, and so every marriage is going to be one man and one woman. Um, and, the, and the picture that I drew here is basically because, I mean, the matchmaker is, is a reasonable person and the matchmaker actually goes in and asks people, who are you willing to marry or are you not willing to marry? And then the matchmaker figured out that, that this is the graph of people that are willing to marry each other. Yeah, so these are the only marriages that, that, uh, that people are willing to do. This one, he can't do because it's the US. Um, everything else is fine. And, uh, and then that's it. Okay? So again, so let's ask ourselves the following question. Who, who, can, who can never get married? Yeah. I didn't tell you, but F is five years old, and no one wants to be married. I'm sorry, if I'm okay. Uh, so, he must not marry. Is there anyone that he, that he should definitely marry? Hey, why is that? Because A and one appear to really want to marry each other. Well, the only person that one is willing to marry is A. Okay. And so, no matter no matter what else the matchmaker does um, with uh, with uh, women two and three, he's always going to be able to go to go to uh, women one and tell her to marry man A. Okay. And so so she should definitely marry A. Definitely. Okay. okay, so let's do the following thing. Let's make a definition again. Okay, so definition. 
set of men is independent. If they can all be married at the same time. If they can be married simultaneously. Okay. So, um, so let's do the same thing. Let's do the same thing as here. Let's make a list of all the independent sets of men. And now maybe let's start with the opposite order. So let's start with the smallest sets. So, for example, the empty set is, is fine. Right? What, are, what are the sets of size 1 that, that, uh, that are independent? Well, they're, they are the people that can marry, which is everybody except for F. Right? So, F A, B, C, D, E. What about the pairs? So, which pairs can get married? Well, again, it seems like a lot of pairs can get married, so maybe let me ask you which pairs cannot get married. But, but notice that this, this definition is about the men. And why the men? Because the men are the ones that are taking this. Uh, so, so we're asking which which pairs of men could not get married at the same time. So everything involving F uh, that cannot be. What about things, what about pairs that don't involve F? Are there any pairs that cannot get married at the same time? D and E cannot get married at the same time. And why? Because they're only willing to marry the same person, and we said you have no polygamy, um, so the DNA cannot get married at the same time. Okay. And then all the other pairs are fine. Right? So I'm going to write all the other pairs, and you should think about how it's possible to marry them. For example, A and B, well, A could marry one, B could marry two. A, C, A, D, A, E, B, C, D, D. B, E, C, D, C. So no matter which one of these pairs, you can check that it's possible to marry. Okay. What about any larger sets? Is it, is it possible <coughs> to, to marry any larger sets? Yeah? A, B, C. A, B, C. For example, I can marry A to 1, B to 2, and C to 3. There may be a different way, like A to 1, C to 2, and B to 3. But part of the set of men is concerned that's the same set, A, B, C. Yes? A C E. So again, I'm going to try to do this in alphabetical order. A C E A uh, C and E. That's fine. Anything? Anybody else? A B E. A B E. Are you cheating? Are you just looking at that board? <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? A B D. And. And of course, that, that kind of makes sense because we said we said the, uh, the matchmaker should definitely marry A, and so we expect to see A in all the lists. And we said that the matchmaker cannot marry F, so we expect F not to be in any of the lists. And the question is, what are the other two people? What, what can the other two people do? And the other two people can be any pair, B, C, B, D, B, E, C, D, C, E. It can be any pair except for B and E. Okay? So that's our list. So I hope you're seeing something here, um, just that these two lists are exactly the same. They come from very different situations, but I'm getting exactly the same list. And again, if I, if I ask you what the bases are, then the bases are exactly the same ones. And so these are going to be the five solutions that are possible. OK, do you guys have any questions about that before we continue? So far, maybe this doesn't look like a math talk to you. Let's, let's, put, some, let's put some algebra in um, so Let's see, what's a good place to go? Let me go bring this one down here. Well, you, you remember what, these, what the goals are. So remember here, you want to build as many as possible. There, you want to marry as many people as possible. 
with the stuff. Let's send this up here so that you can see it as you want.
No. So right. So I guess what you're telling plus, me is that I, I could. Minus 40, yeah. I guess what you're telling me is that I can just put f anywhere, and because f is equal to one, you can put an f anywhere, and that's, that's going to give you an equation. So, so maybe we should stop before we start putting more f's, more f's, more f's. But can you can you think of a and, and so actually, let's agree that these are basically the same equation, and uh, I mean this is a perfectly fine equation. But somehow this one is smaller, right? This one involves only D and E, and this one involves three letters. Okay. okay, are there any other equations that you can think of? I think there's one more that you haven't told me. What happens when I take B squared minus C squared squared? Consider it a different equation? No. It's, it is a different equation. Um, they're, kind of, they're kind of the same equation. Let, let's, let's, let's keep it in there, but we agree also that we could take any of these equations and square them and get another equation. Yep? So this is honestly a new equation. Exactly a new equation that follows from these two, but let me say that it's new in the sense that it involves new letters. Okay. And in that sense, this one is not new because it doesn't involve new letters. Okay, so independence is. Tell me what the independence is. Sorry. Any guesses? Okay, well, the empty set is independent. <laughs> A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Why do I not put F? Because there is an equation that involves only F. So I don't get to put F here. Okay. Now what about the next step? What are the pairs? Well, let's say, let's say what, are the, what are the dependent pairs? Okay, so because f is dependent, that means that any pair involving f is dependent. And the other dependent pair is this one that you see right here, d and e. But all the other pairs are independent. So you see where I'm headed. Right? So b, a, c, b, d, d, e, d, d, c, d, 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 c, d, and c, e. And what about the triples? Well, actually, I meant, to, I meant to ask you the same question that I asked you right behind here, which is, what can you never put in, a, in an independent set? <laughs> f can never be in an independent set because f is, f is already dependent by itself. And what can I always put in an independent set? A. A. There, there is no way that you can write an equation involving A and the other guys because a is the only one that has Z's, and there's no way that you can cancel those things. So that means that here we can always put A, okay? And what other pairs can we put? Well, you guessed it. A, B, C, A, B, D, A, B, E, A, C, D. Okay. So I hope you agree with me that something is going on here. Um, because we're looking at these three very different settings and we're getting the same answers. And so, actually this is... This is no accident, as you can imagine, otherwise I wouldn't be here. <laughs> so... So 
what's the point? The point is that I've, we have talked about three notions of independence. Here, independence means no cycles. Here, independence means no equations. And here, independence means uh, ability to marry at the same time. Okay. So the thing is that these three notions of independence have a lot in common. So what do these three notions of independence independence have in common? Why, why is it that we're seeing the same thing in three very different places? Well, let's start with a property that you told me. So what did you tell me? You told me that if I take an independent set, and if I take things away from it, then that's still going to be independent. Does that sound fair enough to you? So let me, let me write it out, and then we will... Uh, so maybe you're taking notes to leave room for something here. I already called it the columns one, two, three, so maybe let's call these A, B, and C. So leave room for A. B says if J is independent, and I is a subset of J, then I is independent. So I think that makes sense. Here, if you build a bunch of roads and you didn't form any cycles, then if you build a subset of those roads, then of course you're still not going to form any cycles. Here, if you have a bunch of variables and they have no polynomial equations between them, then if you throw out some of the variables, you're still not going to have any polynomial equations between them. And here, if, uh, if a certain set of men can marry, then any subset of them can also marry. So we agree that this is this happens for all these three things. What else do these things have in common? There's another thing they have in common, which is that the empty set is always independent. Okay. So that's pretty clear. You can certainly build no <coughs> code if you're gonna make no cycles. If you have no variables, you can't have equations. And if you marry nobody, then there's no obstructions to doing it. Okay. Yep? The equivalent to <coughs> there exists an independent set. That's equivalent to saying that there exists an independent set. Exactly. Now, there's a third property that these things have in common, and this property is a little bit harder. So let me write it down, and then we'll talk about it. So it says that. So let, let me first say the words, and I'll write it down. If I have two independent sets, and one is smaller than the other one, then I can always take something from the bigger set and put it in the smaller set and stay independent. So let me write that down. If I and J are independent, and I is less than J. So if you're not familiar with this notation, this means the number of elements of i is less than the number of elements of j. Okay. So i is a smaller set, j is a bigger set. So what I'm, what I'm claiming is that you can always take an element from j, put it in i, and stay in the band. So I'll write it down. There is some element j which is in J, and which is not in I already. Okay. Not in I. Such that when I take my set, my smaller set, and I add this new element, then this is still in the best. Is that clear to you? The, um, 
why this is true? Actually, to, to me, this is not so clear. To me, it's not obvious why this is true. I'm saying that, I mean, let's say that, that it's a bigger island. So I'm saying that if you can build a set of 10 rows without with creating cycles, and if you can build some other set of 12 rows without building any cycle, then we're saying this set is smaller than this set. And what I claim is that you're always going to be able to take one road that you built in your second plan and build it at the 11th road in, in your first plan. And that's not so clear. Right? So it's true, but it's not so clear. So maybe what I'll do is that I will write here a little theorem. Actually, theorems. Um, which is that, so what I, what I came to now is that uh, the, the notions of independence one, two, and three all satisfy properties A, B, Okay, and it looks like I don't have enough time to explain to you why this is. But actually, if you want to do, if you want to practice for BAMO, this is an excellent question. This could, this could very much be a BAMO question, but number one, prove that in this situation of the island and the and the, and the roads, uh, this property is satisfied. That's a, that's a nice question. It's it's not easy, but it's not impossibly difficult either. It's it's a, it's a nice challenging problem. For the second one, that's a little bit harder, but uh, if you try really hard, maybe you can do it. And the third one actually is pretty hard. So, so the third one, you need to know a little bit of, of uh, abstract algebra, and I hope maybe this is an excuse for you to learn abstract algebra, and that way you'll learn why this is true. But the point is that all of these <coughs> notions of independence satisfy these three buckets. Okay? And so, what we're going to do is that whenever you have any notion of independence, if that notion of independence satisfies these three properties, then it deserves to be called a matrix. So that's what a matrix is. So a definition. Um, if you have a collection of sets, maybe let's call it I with this strange if you have a collection I of independent sets <coughs> satisfying these properties A, B, and C, then so if we have this, then we call this a matrix. There it is. That's what, that's what I wanted to define for you. Um, that's a matrix. A matrix is some notion of independence that has these three properties. And according to these theorems, there are these three examples of matrix. So the notion of graph independence gives you a matrix. The notion of matching independence gives you a matrix. And the notion of algebraic independence gives you a matrix. Does anybody know other notions of independence in mathematics? Yeah. Okay. So that so you should only know this if you have learned some linear algebra, which uh, you wouldn't learn in high school. But maybe if you if you have taken a class, you will know that in linear algebra there is something called linear independence. And if you know what li linear independence means, means you can put it into this here. Linear independence also satisfies. Okay. So what's the beautiful thing about this? The beautiful thing is that we have this notion of matrix. And whenever you can prove any statement about matrix, then immediately you have statements in all these fields. If you prove a theorem about matrix, then immediately you have a theorem about graphs, a theorem about matchings, a theorem about algebraic independence, and a theorem about linear independence. Okay. So maybe let's conclude by, by talking about one 
theorem. Oh, I made weird by <laughs> So let's make this a little bit more realistic. Um, let's say that it's a bigger, a bigger island, okay? and uh, maybe you have something like this. And presumably, if there is any kind of island planning around here, um, not only should we plan these rows, but we should actually figure out how much they would cost. So for example, you can imagine that building this very fancy road along the sea is going to cost more than bringing that building this one. So maybe this one costs, uh, I have no idea how much it costs to build a road. But, uh, let's say this is, uh, I don't know, 10, 10 what? Units. 10 units. 10 units, maybe a unit is. Let's say that it's $100,000. Maybe that sounds reasonable. $100,000. Uh, but this one will cost maybe only 50. And maybe it's cost 40, 20. I'm just putting some prices here. And these prices were what the research told us uh, it would cost. Okay. Um, okay. So, so what's more realistic? The more realistic thing, if we're in, in a moment of economic crisis, is that we should do a little bit of city plan, of, of planning. We should figure out these are the costs of building. Now let's actually look for not only the smallest number, but actually the cheapest solution. So what is the cheapest solution? What is the cheapest solution? Well, there is, there is something, let me tell you what the Colombian strategy is. So, the Colombian strategy is no advanced planning, you just build the first thing that's <laughs> So let's do that. So, there's a name for this actually, so this is called the greedy algorithm. Greedy algorithm. At each step, do the cheapest thing possible. At each step, build the cheapest road possible. So let's start with this strategy, okay? And, and if, if there are several choices, just choose one. So for example, there's a bunch of roads that cost 10, so let's build one of them. Okay, maybe we build this one. Then maybe we build this one. Then maybe we build this one. Am I making you nervous now with the like, Colombian city plan? <laughs> so Colombian planning is not so bad that you would build this one. You don't have to do that, right? So let's, let's oh, modify this. At least I build the cheapest road possible. That doesn't close the same. It doesn't close a cycle. What's that? You have three roads without prices. Oh. Oh, yeah. that's, that's bad planning. Uh, let's say this, this costs 40, this costs uh, 20, and this costs 8. Okay, so what should we build next? Well, we shouldn't build this 10 because that would cost a cycle. Are there any others that cost 10? No? So maybe, maybe we go to the next price, the 20. So let's build something of, of price 20, and something else of price 20, and something else of price 20. Then something else. Then don't build this one because it will close the cycle. Then let's build some things of price 30. Well, maybe we shouldn't, right? Because, yeah. because this guy costs 30, but I don't need it. And this costs 30, but I don't need it. So then I go to price 40, price 40, price 40. Um, Are you done? Am I done? Yeah. I'm done. Everything is correct. So that's the greedy strategy. Does this seem like a good idea to you? Yeah? Maybe, maybe. So let me tell you that, and, and you should expect this, most of the time this doesn't work. You, you should never be so short sighted to always do 
thing that seems right at this moment. That's not a good idea, and it's not a good way to run life to just do what seems right right now. You should do a little bit of that planning. But here's an amazing theorem. A theorem. <coughs> um, this works. Why does it work? Because I have a name. Okay. So the greedy algorithm really gives me the optimal solution. Okay. So this really is a cheapest possible solution to this question. There is no cheaper way. The greedy algorithm gives me a cheapest solution. And the reason is that, that I have a meeting. That's the distinct. Unfortunately, I don't really have time to, to prove this theorem to you. But it's true, and it says, for example, that we can apply this theorem to this situation. So I told you that in this situation, the men were actually paying the matchmaker uh, a certain amount of money to get married. Okay? And so what should the matchmaker do? Be greedy. And here the greedy really means in the sense of the word greedy. Just look for the richest person and make sure that they're okay. okay? And then look for the next richest person and make sure that they're okay. And, and always do, do that greedy strategy. And again, because I have a matrix, that is the most profitable solution possible. And really, if you try to prove that this is the optimal strategy, or that this is the optimal strategy in all these situations, believe me, the easiest possible proof is, is this. It's prove it for matrix. This is, it's a lot easier to prove it for matrix than to prove it for any of these individual cases. So this is one example of a statement that that works like this. And so maybe the moral of the story is that I don't know. I don't know what you're more used to. Probably you're more used to graph theory than anything else. And if you have interesting theorems in graph theory, believe me, a lot of them are actually theorems about matrix. And the beauty of that is that you can take your favorite graph theory theorem and translate it into matchings and translate it into algebra, translate it into linear algebra. Uh, and it's all going to work. For example, we have the theorem that if you have n vertices, then the spanning trees have n minus one edges. So all the solutions here have three edges. If you go and translate that into linear algebra, it tells you that there is a good notion of dimension. That planes really have two dimensions, that space really has three dimensions. It's the same theorem, and it doesn't sound at all like the same theorem. But it's a theorem of matrix, and if you, if you specialize, uh, then you see that it's actually the same theorem. And so I hope this is a good enough reason for you to learn a little bit more about matrix. Okay. I'll stop there.